Archie's Garage and more of Uncle Archer's projects. And now we have a 2700 PSI Craftsman 2.3 max gallon per minute overhead valve professional series, professional Briggs and Stratton series, it's 175 cc, and that is 7.75, and I can't read the bottom print because I don't have my glasses on. Something blah, 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 and I think, because that's not horsepower, that's usually talk. It passed the first test. What's the first test? Well, um, the first test is you hook your hose up here, okay, and let the pressure of the water run through. If you don't see any major leaks coming from the rest of it, you could go to step two. And step two is, let's see if the motor runs. Why is that? First of all, like all of these motors, unless you're going to use them for parts, they're, they're short shaft engines, so you're, you're not going to be able to use the engine on a lawnmower. It's parts for a lawnmower engine, but you can't put the lawnmower on, the, this on a lawnmower engine directly. It's a, it's a short output shaft, and I actually just did a, uh, a machine I don't know if it's going to make the web, but the guy used a, a longer adapter. I'll show you. And it broke the adapter, and the blade sat up way too high in the deck, and then you got to drop the, the deck down real low, and it, it just doesn't, it, the cut height's all wrong, and the deck skids the ground, and it's a pain in the neck to push, and it's just wrong. Okay, so, well, if you don't care, you can use it, all right? I won't do it. So, my attitude is, is that if this thing... These are great engines for pressure washers. So the step one fix is, is passed. Step two is we're gonna make the motor run. Then we're gonna hook the hose back up to it and we're gonna spin it again with the hose on and the motor running. And, it, and if you can block off, block off the pressure, all right, which we'll get that off and we'll hook it up to a wand. And if it, it'll probably make pressure, but the question usually is is that the seals go. And so it starts leaking like a sieve. Now my main machine leaks and it works pretty good. In fact, it even leaks a little bit into the oil bath area, but it works fine. And it'll run like that. If you change the oil every year, it'll run like that for a long time. It's not good. Um, but if you can find one that isn't leaking, um, you're good to go. And as long as it's taken care of, you're fine. So this passed test one, we're gonna go to test two. Let's take it apart and see what's inside. Okay, so the fuel that came out of it, it's got all kinds of floaters, it's got water in it. You can see by the color it's not clear. That means the water is the filth, all of that. Uh, but it's not terrible, but it means the gas tank. And I can tell you, when I opened it up, there was dirt around the gas tank. So we're going to go to the next step. We're going to start taking it apart. Okay, guys, so I dug this one out. Just gave it a quick rinse and a blow. Now, this one I had worked on, I want to say last year. It has a pump underneath it that doesn't work right. It's got some issues. It looks a lot nicer than that motor. And a couple of missing parts and whatever, obviously, we can steal. And this cover, I just want everybody to get a good look at that. Okay. For myself, too. The black one has an extra cable. It has what they call, this is an idle down. So when you're not pulling on the trigger, this isn't, isn't the engine isn't trying to make all that power and that RPM. That saves on the pump, wear and tear and heat. Uh, the pumps run a lot cooler. This is a similar motor that is put on some of the Craftsman's because it has a little bit more power than like just a flathead. And it's a clean sheet. It's actually a better, it's one of the best motors they made. It's certainly better than the new overhead valve. So let's start off by removing Everybody, everybody's got to come apart. Everybody got to get undressed and come apart. And oh, that's gonna get steamy in here. I think you just got to keep pulling it. <laughs> pull it. Just pull it. Let's see what happens if you just pull it. Oh, yeah. Quiet. They're really nice motors, and they make nice pressure washers. And I haven't run this since maybe the winter when I tried a different pump on it. That's what I've been kind of doing. It's, like my, it's my pump test rig. So maybe what we'll do is we'll make that guy our pump test rig after we pickle it. We'll see what happens. I think both of you will agree that the one on the right, the Troy built on the right, looks, you know, hot. Not that that one doesn't look bad. It's got the Craftsman name on it, but... I think the one on the right is cleaner all around, doesn't need any paint, doesn't need anything else. All I did was rinse it. There's a lot of crap in the tank. So while I'm rinsing everything off, I decided to stick, stay focused on this machine. I got this rinsed out, blew it out, and to get more of the water out, I'm going to put a little gasoline in. I'm going to plug up the, this end here, 
put a little gasoline in it, shake it up, and dump it out and blow it out. Okay, you got a real cluster F over here. So, you have this light spring here, all right? That goes, so that goes into the first hole here. Then you got this spring, longer one. That's the second hole. And there's also another gasket that goes in here, because so, it's a whole sandwich. So, uh, I, I'm not sure where this gasket came from. One of them, we see by the depression, we'll know more when we get the sandwich apart. This is the choke rod, because automatic choke, and that comes up here. We'll pull off the springs, yeah, okay. And then, usually, let's just hold that out of the way. Okay, let that hang down. And then usually, I already disconnected the wires and the hose. So generally, this one comes off, there's a Z bin, and then here we should be able to come this way. Now let's bring it over to the bench. And we've still got one spring left in here, but we shouldn't have to deal with that. Okay, let's not, and say we did. And uh, we'll, we'll clean it off a little bit, and then uh, we'll get in there and see what's going on. Five minutes later. All right, let's see what's in here. Sorry, there's so many fans on. I can't help it, it's so hot. Oh, it's kind of stuck. Oh, oh boy. All right, we're gonna put a little lube on it and then I'm gonna lock it in uh, soft ice. A few moments later. Let's see, right, I bet you it's, you know, well, I don't know. I don't know, what do you think? I say it's good. The verdict is, it's not bad. There's the kind of crap that I saw in the gas tank as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks real good. Oh, nice. Brass seat. Wow. That's a little extra. All right, I'm just going to get my brushes out. Run this thing through. Blow it out. And put it together guys I, I don't see anything else what are you thinking here yeah she got some junk in there and that's what you figure okay so you guys know the routine right I'm gonna just wash it all right we'll be back in the bed I don't think you guys care about that you've seen me do this a million times you know what to do take your brushes right and your ramrods your ramrods stick stick things in it all right this is that it's like 28 thousandths or so I'm gonna run that in there I'm going to blow it, put the washer aside, gasket. All right, we'll get that nice and clean in a minute. I did feel a little something in there. It's better now. Yep. I'm throwing a little acid, too. I like to do that. I'm going to blow this out. All right, throw it in a little bit of acid. Uh, most of you guys probably know I use the Alumabrite. You know, Noxon and stuff like that. Uh, is it Noxon? Yeah, it's the brass, brasso, the, the liquid stuff. Right, while I'm cleaning the rest of it, we're just going to give it a little rinse. Works good on aluminum. It's, it's for aluminum, for welding. Well, cleaning aluminum before you weld it. All right? This looks real good. These guys here, you take the big one, just to knock out anything that might be in there. And then, I don't know, will the little guy fit in this one? They don't usually have this hole. Yeah. The little guy fits in here. Don't forget to wash underneath these, right? These caps. Spray it directly underneath. All right. Did you get any eyes? Okay, this is an air vent. And it's small, but poke around it to dislodge anything that might be there. And then I like to take my little brushes while you're spraying it. Let's open that up a little bit. Knock off anything that might be in here. And then we're just going to blow it out with compressed air. Oh, so much junk. Put a little down in here. All right, now we just got to clean out the... It's a little bit junk here. Get it off the body so it doesn't fall back in. Especially around where the gasket's gonna seat for the bowl. That's it. Let's blow it out. I'll be back in a bit. We'll put it back together. We got in here. 
through all of those. Oh, there's another one here. This port. Yeah, that's was that goes underneath there. Okay, put a little of your two-stroke on everything that on the gaskets. Okay, now. And these guys, when they're really dirty, okay, it's nice and clean comes out. Blow it. Take my wire brush. See how clean it is. So I've run it through. Put a little bit of lubricant on the washer. Put a little in here, the threads. And don't forget to lubricate those shafts. All right, now we gotta figure out how to put it back on. A few moments later. Let's put my finger on the roll. Yeah, it's all like junk in it. Okay. Coming out all over. Let's get a rag. Oh yeah. That should do it. Blow in there a little bit. Watch your eyes. Ah, oh, it's coming out of there too. We'll put a little bit more in. When we do the compression test, we're going to run this through a couple of times. Put a little more juice in there, and then we'll do a compression test, and it'll blow because when you stop up the end, it forces uh, the two-stroke with the tranny all over the combustion chamber and up into the valves, and it's good into the exhaust. It's good for it. You want what's what we need right now? Yeah. Seventy-five pounds. That's not bad. That's a good 75 pounds, too. And it probably has compression brake on it. We're golden with compression. Now we'll check for spark. I'm going to make sure that this works good. So we're going to want to put a little bit of oil on it. It's going to smoke. Make sure it's, it, it moves nice and easy. Got plenty of spark. Let's see. It looks like block the light. Yeah, you get the idea. Hold on. Now, we want to make sure we get the tops of these. Nice and clean now. And now this magnet here is polished. So there's no rust in the way. Get our 10,000 spieler gauge. These are the bolts, so we want to get some uh, oil on those bolts, or anti-seize, can't forget about that. Just pull this right over, the bolt maggots click in, both maggots are clicked in, and just tighten it. So it's going to snug it, snug that one, I have to use the deep socket. By hand. Later that same evening. Isn't that nice? Alright, we'll wipe down the rest of it and we'll shoot the rest of it tomorrow. But let me clean up a plug, put the plug in, put the wire on, and then I'll get the gas tank on. Everything I assemble with, I either use oil and or a little bit of uh, anti-seize. And here, just to make sure everything works good, we're gonna it's pretty clean. I got it good and clean, but we're gonna put a little oil. Especially in here, where the magnet goes, uh, where the, not the magnet, where the uh, spring goes. We pull it through a bunch of times. I mean, what do you think? It looks. I think it looks dynamite. She needs a little bit of oil. She's got some oil in it. She needs a little bit. She's very clean. And yeah, keep it on. There we go. Again, it 
has an idle up, idle down feature, which we'll get into tomorrow. That's as the pressure is applied. And we don't want to run a few orders, we want to burn the pump out if the pump is good. may have to drill the carb. Tomorrow we'll hook up the hose to it and we'll let it run. You see all the smoke in here? So I'm going to let that air out for a few minutes. Like I said, we'll come back tomorrow, we'll hook the hose to it, we'll make it run. I'll put a little more gas in it too because we're going to need it. Do a little pressure testing and a few other things and see what's going on and see if we need to take it any further. But I think that's enough for tonight, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. The next day. It's the next day. And I thought about it a little bit last night. So we're going to start off with just pulling the bowl. And uh, so I've got the, the fuel line clamped off. We're going to pull the bowl to get to the jet. And I'm just going to drill the jet a little bit. Then top off the oil, put it back together again. We'll run it and just see if she's running okay. And before she gets hot, we'll then take it outside and we'll hook up the hose to it. All right. And this way we can run it. Now, this might save me a little bit of time. Can I get to this without being in your way? COVID-19, back up, six feet. There's the jet. But I want to remind everybody that uh, if you looked at that plug and how wide it was, that's lean. Like I said, it's almost too clean. So th we're already at, this is 0 0.28, so I call it 28. And you can go as high as about 30. This is pretty big. So I would think that maybe there'd be another problem with it. We can always replace this, so I have others. This is a 0292, and this doesn't quite go. Right, and so it feels like it almost wants to. So the jet could be deformed slightly, dirt or you know oxidation. So let's run this in. You know those wires are nice, but <clears throat> they don't always do it. And sometimes you have to tune. And now this one is 031. So remember now this is a different motor than the flathead. So I'm basing it off of. I don't get to do that many of these. So we're going to go a little bit bigger. I mean, this is a bigger motor than the 5.5 flatheads, and it is overhead valve, and it is a different series. So we're not going to go any bigger than this. This is 031. So basically, it's 030. All right, let's put it in. Stop coming off. It's better. But it's not right. Uh, because it shouldn't run this bad. So if there really is a problem with it, we will steal that other motor. And this will be some kind of a backup of parts machine. So we don't want to keep running the pump dry too long. But by the way, pumps wear out more when they get hot and they get hot by compressing water there was some water in there and it's not hot okay it's because it's not compressing anything so you have a little bit of time to test an engine before you get that involved all right so it's just about aired out in here now let me take a look a little closer in probably a little grainy but just to show you uh, but this is aluminum and a lot of times aluminum pumps just go bad because of the fuzz that grows on them, the oxidation so what we're doing here is I'm taking my, one of my pipe cleaners. This is, you get this at Depot or whatever. It's for working on pipe, copper pipe and stuff. We're going to run that in there a few times with a little bit of my two-stroke. And you can also use a little bit of your uh, Lumabrite, which works really, really well. So if we have to, we'll do that. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do for now. The wire brush, because I don't know what I'm going to put on here for test just yet I don't know what I have left in stock but whatever it is I want it to go on fairly well and then we're going to before we do it we're going to oil both of them so that the things go the fittings go on fast so let me show you what else I'm doing this is the pull down cable um, so this is essentially what happens is, is when the pump is pulling pressure it will pull on this okay 
and it will pull more throttle. And when it's not sensing the pressure, it'll release. So one of the problems that can happen is, is these things get stuck. Um, so let's just try it again, and we're going to work this manually. All right? You can defeat that. I did on my other machine. You can plug it off because the cables go bad, the actuator gets stuck. All right. So let's see what happens. Let's restart it. Okay, that's what the problem was, all right? That was trying to pull, it's trying to, uh, by default, it's going to a full throttle without a load. So that's why it's surging. That and it was running lean, but that's why I didn't want to go too far with drilling that jet, because in my estimation, we were already on the edge. We really didn't need much more. Although, it, is it a white plug? So so what do we do now? So we're going to bring it outside. Let me get a, a setup for it, so even if it's just a test setup. We'll get it plugged into some water and let's check pump all right so the motor's running good okay it needs to run we put a little oil in it too just a little bit now watch well, you want to make sure you flush it because i just got a little piece of junk and it locked up even though i did some flush so let it pump for a while no leaks, fucking good. down we may have gone a little bit too far on the jet too so what we want to do now is we want to bring it back up on the bench and just pull the unloader out and check it and clean it and then maybe we'll also do the idle down valve as well and that should do it this don't take anything else apart because it's not leaking so that's what we're going to do okay we're going to start off by taking off the idle down valve and that way it'll also be a little easy to get to this this is your unloader so we're going to remove those first. Okay, so there's nothing in here out of the ordinary. That's just, that's one of your pumps right there. That's a check valve. You can replace, this is the other end of the uh, idle down. We're just going to clean it and check it. I don't see anything bad. And this is the uh, pressure compensator, all right, over here. So that's, that's this end. I took it out. It's not that bad. It's a little dirty. It's oxidation, and this is where the valve is, okay, itself, where the pressure is adjusted. So that gives you your total pressure, and then it unloads. And so it's a pressure valve, but they call it an unloader. All right, so we're going to take it over on the bench and just give it a closer look, lube everything up and put it back together, and we're going to hook everything up the way it should be and then try to flush it and then try to use the machine as it would normally be used and see how it... This, this really looks very good, so that's what we want to do next. Okay, so I took the valve apart, and it goes in this way, and this is the tip on the end, and they usually put a little Loctite on it. We're going to put a little bit on, too. This could be white grease. It feels like it. It's very dry, sticky, right? That's what it feels like. There was also a little bit of, uh, you know, junk 
in there. So we're just gonna, yeah, it, it's dry. All right, so we're just gonna use my sort of oily, gasoline-y, whatever, solvent, and just carefully remove it. Now, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, I've taken apart a lot of these, and they're usually just destroyed. They're so gacked. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll go inside the barrel. We'll get, it, that's pretty clean. I wouldn't do much to it other than rinse it. And here's the tip, and like I said, we'll just put a dab of Loctite. This looks pretty good. It's just some goop on the end. Now we'll put a little bit, little dab of do ya. And there's also some oils on this too, so. On this model, it was an Allen key down on this side. So the Allen key goes down in here. Right, there you go. It spins nice. Now let me get just a dab of Loctite on that. Excuse me, blue blue Loctite. Just a dab. And there's a, two flats on it. That's it. Let's see. Yeah. It doesn't move very far, you know. Well, the ports look like they're okay. There was this a port there. And this, I think there's only one port. We'll put a little white grease on it. Just to make sure that it goes in nice and easy. We want to blow out before we put it together. Now there's the pressure side. And I think it'd be easier to install it. This is this just goes like this, right? This is adjustable, so we're not going to touch it. What we're going to do is we're going to grease it a little bit. Okay, gets two of these cups. So one cup is here. They're the same. So if you want to put a little grease in here, put a little bit of oil and grease, just a touch. Notice how I buttered it up, just a touch. Now. Make sure this goes in the right way. Add a little bit of grease to this guy. So there's no issues. Now we'll load this in last. Okay, we're going to put it aside for now. Okay, now look at the idle down. It looks pretty clean. That There is a tiny little port in all of these. And... There's not much you can do with these. You can clean them a little bit. You can't take them apart. If they don't work, you either have to cap it off or replace them. Uh, and that's about all you can do. So I'm just going to give it a rinse, lube it up, and put it back in. And we're going to try and connect it and see what happens. And that's all I can do. You, you can't do a lot with these. They either work or they don't. This one, I'd say, would, would work. Um, that's my best guess. You could put a little, I've already put a little lubricant in this cable. It's a little bent on the end, but that shouldn't stop it. Uh, I don't see a lot wrong with it, so let's put a little, little bit of this on it. And we're off to the races. All right, I put the cable back to where it was, and I just took a little slack off. So, it should be okay. And we'll put a little dab of oil on it now, just so that she can race around and do her thing. That's all we can do. Now we're going to connect it and test again, one step at a time. We've got to reflush it, and it blew out the pump, but we're going to flush the pump, flush through the handle, then put the, uh, the nozzle on. And the why I say that is this, you have to be very careful because if you blow a piece of junk in one of these nozzles, you're in trouble. All right? You'll get hydrolock. And oh boy, that's dangerous. Watch my other video on it. All right, we'll be back in a minute. All right, let's do a little test. Well, it's not pouring out.
You know, I think part of it is the idle down's not working. It does seem to do something. something's not right with it we're going to look into putting a different cap on it or just mo moving it out of the way uh, that's my guess <clears throat> and I think I'm going to just put the pump underneath the other motor for now and we'll see what's going on with that I think it'd be better off all right so let me give that a shot I might actually have a cap for that I think I have that pump somewhere all right so I took one plug out I'm gonna take the other one if they go Okay, we're just going to clean it. It's a little bit of debris. We're going to clean out in there a little bit just so that there's nothing in the way of the pump. And I also wanted to see hey, they're basically the same. Okay, they're close enough, so we should be able to use this plug. It's just a little bit different. I'm going to clean it, but as long as the threads go in, and it, it, most of these pumps are the same. So I'm going to clean this up, guys. We're going to take this other plug out. I'm just going to blow it and lube it a little bit and put it back in again. And this one's in really nice shape. We don't want to take anything else apart. I've been running some lubricant through this every time I sort of test it. I blow uh, either oil or, you know, you can use WD, but I've also been using like penetrance. And that's in pretty good shape. So we're just going to clean, put everything back together again. And so we're going to, by this plug here, we're going to defeat the, uh, the idle down. And I'm going to put the other motor on, and we're going to see what it does. That's really bad. We got that storm coming here, so it's on and off, you know, deluge. So I don't know how much I'll get done, but we're going to keep working on it. A few moments later. That's all cleaned up, <clears throat> lubed up with white grease, and we're just going to drive them back down nice and easy. They don't need to be that tight. And with the white grease, <clears throat> you can get them back off again. And they'll seal well. And I just blew out with a little low pressure air in there. And I'm going to clean the body off a little bit. So, you know, we've gone through it. Okay. And now I'll clean the out of the body. And we're going to do a little motor swap, chassis swap. All right, as it sits right now, it's ready to go. Now, you could check this, but there's no water or anything I see going on. This is such, it's like no use on it. Put a schmear, clean everything off, and put a schmear of regular, you know, bearing grease there. And a little bit of bearing grease around these threads and in there that we had previously cleaned. I showed you what I was doing with that. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. So, everything else seems to be ready to go. We're going to put this on the other chassis now. And we'll retest if it's not pouring on me. Much, much, much later. All right, it's raining out hard. It's idling well, and you'll hear it. You'll hear the unloader work. Okay guys, it's just raining too much for me to be out there, we're in the middle of a storm. It's running really good, there's no leaks, there's no issues, the unloader is working good, we're done. I'm going to bring it back in, we're going to give it a little bit of a touch up, and just check the oil, and uh, you know, put a little more gas in it, and then I'll, I want to move to another one, because I want to figure out which the setup for it. This is a decent wand and hose, it needs to be cleaned a little bit more, but uh, I have another one and I want to see what it what's gonna go with what all right so we'll be back in a few soon after yum chocolate 
later that same evening. Uh, so what we were able to do was actually service and change the pump. And so we got real lucky on that, and I had a lot of extra parts because a lot of them were the same. And we were able to get it back on this chassis. I put it back on this chassis because it has to do with the direction of the input and out for the water and the output for the pressure. It wants to be in the back, and so it's rotated a certain way, and it fits this chassis. To fit the other chassis, I would have had to loosen up the pump and crack. You know what? That could cause a seal issue. No. Put it back on here. But there's a few of the things that we did to this. Uh, yeah, it took a little while, you know, waiting for parts to come in and uh, just to have stuff around enough to service it. But somebody's going to get a really nice machine. So it's all service. Uh, I had done the valves a while back. We had gone through the ignition system and all of that on this a while back. So this is a great power pack. 7.75 uh, foot-pounds of torque. It's probably around 6 horsepower. They're a little bigger than the, than the flatheads. 175 cc. You get a good amount of pressure out of this thing. You saw the pressure it was making. Uh, so it's probably still around, you know, they rated probably a little high. But the gallon per minute, when you go up a gallon per minute at that pressure, then you get a lot more force. Uh, but she's running good. Somebody's going to get a really nice pressure washer that's that properly serviced. So we get the oil in there. And uh, let me see what I uh, settle in on. So this will be the last look for now. Uh, until I come up with a wand and we'll bring it outside and we'll take some more pictures of it uh, So thanks for watching guys. You probably see this one more time like I said with the wand and whatever else in the daylight and uh, And that's it. Stay tuned for the next one. And I think the next one's going to be another pressure washer So I'll see you guys in a bit like and subscribe Or just garage. All right So I just wanted to go over a couple of things with you guys I'm, I'm looking at this wand I took apart as a good possibility for the black pressure washer I like it because it's adjustable, but the point I wanted to make out is I didn't really show any of the filth or whatever, but this was black and packed with dirt, and all of this, it was all jammed solid, and what happens is, this is the nozzle end, what happens is in these little passages, if you get any dirt in there under the over 2,000 to 3,000 PSI, it will impact that dirt so hard into the brass and steel that it'll make it'll make a seal and you'll not only will the wand not work but you'll get hydro lock you can damage your pump but more than that in order you, there's no way to get the pressure out the fittings the, all, most of these fittings get tighter under pressure that's how they seal so it's very hard to get stuff apart when you start wrenching things apart what can happen is is these things become projectiles and suddenly they're released and you're standing right over it you got your gut here your hands your face and you can get really hurt so I, I, I think you've already seen me do a flush you can connect everything connect the hoses up connect the wand up in this case you, you can't I, I would flush the hose well and not get the wand dirty because there's no way to flush this wand because the tip is integral on the ones where the tip is an attachment, you flush the wand, everything gets flushed out, you make sure your tips are kept clean, you can lubricate the end, you put the tip on, always observing that it's clean. And again, not because it, it just fail on you, and this is a fairly complicated wand, but because you get hurt. All right, so we're gonna put this back together. I've cleaned it, it's really bad. I used a combination of Scotch-Brite, acid, degreaser, and now I'm gonna put together a little lubricant and uh, we'll get this back together again and hopefully we'll do a test on this and hopefully this will be a wand that sells with it so we'll be back in a bit all right guys let's test this wand and then we're done I think we're done guys, watch this garage.